Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Hype Down, and today I am here to explain my two Unholy DK builds that I mainstream while playing my Unholy DK. Now, it's safe to say that these two specs are the way to play the Unholy Death Knight. It's the um, way that I kill skirms with, uh, BGs with, um, breadcrumb RBGs with. <laughs> when I say breadcrumbs, it's like if you like we're like 2k and like 2200 experience heroes and all that other stuff so it's like when we go up against like a 1600 team they just get swallowed so we just we all fuck around sometimes we don't even have roll with healers but anyway on track um these are two great unholy dk builds and guys this is 100 percent accurate information at the moment i do understand there is no unholy dks out there that are producing content i apologize because i actually really really love unholy uh, but you will start seeing more of that out of me. Okay, so without any further ado, let's first start off with the build that I like the most. The build that I believe is way more reliable in arenas, RBGs, BGs, skirt, whatever. Uh, this is like the most reliable build. Probably the strongest because of how great uh, Necrotic Plague is for Unholy. And that's the Rot build. Now first let's take a, a look at the talents. I'm going to be mainstreaming so sorry unholy blight and necrotic plague everything else is pretty much staples when i say staples guys that means no matter what you're going to keep it because lynchborn is your major defensive for healing my screen just went black on me okay it's back <laughs> um asphyxiate of course varies on what comp you're playing with um, if your comp is like stun heavy, you're going to go with chill blends. Stun heavy teams are um, TSG, Ebola, Walking Dead. So actually in arena gameplay guys, you're actually going to main chill blends. Um, but for like duels, um, anything like that, you're going to be maining Asphyxiate. Even in uh, RBGs. You can run Asphyxiate because, like I said, there's not really too many people that are going to stun. And also, um, certain maps you can grip stun so they can knock them off the cliff, etc. But um, before Arena Guys, you're going to main chill blends because having too many stuns will make the stuns DR. And um, you don't want that. So pretty much what DR means is it's, it's called Diminishing Return. And this 5 second stun can turn into like a shady 1 second stun if two people stun the target and then you stun them on top of it. Um, I did however introduce a trick. I'm not sure if you guys checked that out. It's a good treat. It's a great treat. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trick to make the asphyxiate silence. So potentially you can even run asphyxiate with uh, Ebola or TSG but the thing is you got to pay attention to the stun DRs so for instance um, if you're going to be doing Ebola you can have your Pharaoh stun him three times and then you can asphyxiate and it will silence instead of, instead of stun um, I'm not going to get too deep into that because I have a video on it explaining it very very deep in a, a couple of different aspects so Please click that link that I'm going to provide with the annotations and it will take you right to the video. Alright guys, moving along. Uh, let's just get right into the build guys. I'm sorry. I, I always do this. I always jab. I, I really try to make sure you guys get all the information. But let's just get into the build. Let's get right down to the nitty gritty. Glyphs guys. If you're in 2v2s and you don't have a healer, you're going to want to run with Empower empowerment because you're going to need that emergency heal and because we're running with uh, unholy blight we're not going to have a plague leech for two emergency death siphons so this will indeed be needed okay now regenerative magic of course re uh, you're going to need this because you want your AMS to be on a 25 second cooldown versus a 45 second cooldown and of course really important You'll never go wrong with dispelling the target. This makes your icy touch so much more useful, and um, I just can't explain how great a dispel for a single click is. Like, you can dispel hots, pre shields, uh, helpful buffs like kings, might, uh, mark, mark of the wild, spell power. I mean, a lot of shit. So this is why this is very important. Monk buff, a lot of stuff. So now guys, let's go over to the Gladiator Sanctum, 
and get down to business. Do, 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 do. Now, the way you're going to want to start off this rotation, guys. Now, a lot of guys, what is the rotation for unholy? What is the rotation for unholy? There's, there's really a priority system. You have to understand this. Now, the priority system is judged upon what your objective is and with the with what the objective is for unholy guys is you since you have necrotic plague your main goal is to keep that stack at 15 um, for unholy necrotic plague does like 10 times more damage than frost's necrotic plague that's what you guys need to understand and um, so for instance what your main your main opener is going to be now you can chain and ice the guy. You can just automatically open up with unholy blight, uh, but just make sure that whenever you do pop unholy blight, you're going to stay by him. Cause the worst feeling in the world is popping unholy blight. You're getting blown back by a hunter. You're getting polymorphed, and then the guy displaces away, etc. This is a lot of things that can happen to mess up your unholy blight. So guys, make sure you get a clean unholy blight off. And the way to do this, guys, is to stun. Always start off with your stun. So you stun the guy, boom, you pop on Holy Blight. Now the main objective now, you want to do Festering Strike. Why? Because you want to increase the duration. See how it's 33 seconds now? So now you're going to have a very, very long Necrotic Plague stack on this guy. From here, guys, um, you're going to want to spread this one to the other target. Why? Because, yes, they're both going to be at 15 stacks, but look how long this one's lasting for. So now she got this really, really great stacked necrotic plague you want to gr death grip this guy over a or run to this guy and then death grip this guy over and blood boil it you have to spread this when you're playing unholy with unholy blight guys the game isn't about score strike spam this isn't the game boom this isn't the game because everything is weak with unholy okay but this isn't the goal okay your goal I'm gonna let that drop your goal is to get necrotic plague on the target increase the duration of necrotic plague and then worry about the stack the primary objective with necrotic plague isn't to get the stack to 15 the fastest it's to make the duration last longer because let me tell you let me show you what happens when you're worrying about the stack too long look icy touch icy touch plague strike plague strike blood boil blood boil now i'm going to throw some death code at the target okay now i'm going to do icy touch blood tap icy touch plague strike icy touch now look we have no runes now and we're desperate to get this stack at a better duration okay now we're going to do one pressuring strike but you see now, I, now i'm just going to constantly be uh s like worrying about pressuring striking and that's not a lot of time guys what if i get cc what if i get rooted what if i get um let me let me get them off what if i get cc what if i get rooted what if you know what i'm saying uh he just gets away from me and starts pillar hugging. So that's why the duration of Necrotic Plague is way more um, important than getting the stack up. Because guys, it's going to get to 15 whether you like it or not. It's going to get to 15 whether you try to add stacks to it. So worry about the duration, not the stack. And another reason why the duration is very, very crucial that I'm not going to be able to show you here, but you can observe it on certain videos put it like this let's say both of these guys are together okay I'm I'm sorry guys you're just gonna have to imagine that you use your imagination for this guys I'm going to put him by the target so you can see two people now if I'm on this target but this target is next to it boom necrotic plague is now on this target okay now when I hit festering strike boom and I hit Fresh Strike again, boom, this is going to be at 30 seconds, but this one is still going to be at like 15 seconds. Now probably at 10 seconds. So what you do, guys, is you Fresh String Strike, uh, Scorch Scourge, now work for a Blood Tap, work for a Blood Tap. Let's see, now you got a room. Now what you do is you Fresh String Strike, Blood Tap, and then you Blood Boil it over. Now they're both going to have a 15 stack of Necrotic with 20 seconds on it, okay? Now... Let's just say I don't want to waste a blood boil. If he... Let me put him back by the target. If my ghoul continues to stay by the target that I'm constantly stacking with this 15 stack of Necrotic Plague, it will then... Let me, let me use my mouse. This guy's Necrotic Plague is going to expire. 
but once it expires now this one is going to automatically jump to it now hey, we're going to have two high stacked 15 guys and it's absolutely beautiful guys i just can't really explain how great this is okay and this is how you got to focus your mind on you don't worry about lining up score strikes it's all about the necrotic plague now when it comes to the rotation guys what do you do i'm going to do another opener okay now i'm going to unholy blight stun festering festering scourge scourge now look i uh death coil death coil look he's already at fif uh, 15 right so now let's just say the ghouls buy him i'm gonna blood boil once i'm going to score strike score strike Death coil, death coil, scourge, scourge, blood tap, festering, okay? Because I'm keeping this duration going. Now, I'm going to transform the ghoul. I'm going to hit another festering strike. Now, let's line up some score strikes. Because why? Because now we have a 15 stack. We have 20 seconds to deal DPS now. Now, from this point, I'm going to have my guard go out. You see my pet fucking them up. You see my death coil is fucking them up. Now, look, 10 seconds. Boom, festering strike, blood tap, scourge. Uh, now you're gonna you're gonna have this time the times when you're gonna be rune star, but it's okay because necrotic plague is your bread and butter for this build. It's not about your abilities. You see, look, I'm rune star, but look, fe uh, festering strike. Now I have rune weapon here, guys. I can easily rune weapon. I can easily stun this guy. You know what I'm saying? But it's no it's no problem. I have a teammate. This is in the one v one game, guys. Um, you gotta understand, your necrotic plague is going to be doing a shitload of damage. Now watch, when I pop my utilities, my gargoyle, I got all my procs activated. And just look at the damage, guys. Look, look at my mic test going over there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to transform the ghoul. I'm going to hit room weapon. I'm going to increase the duration some more with festering strikes and score strikes. Now I'm going to be using death coils. My activation trigger just came back. Score strikes, festering to keep it up some more. Now look, guys, again, I'm fucking him up, right? What if the healer's over here, right? Either I'm going to focus death grip him in and blood boil, or again, I'm going to run over here, death grip, and then blood boil over to him can't do because he's, he should be here so now these both would have had the stack that's how you play the rock build guys okay look I just, that, you see not the time I was over there I came back and did two festering strikes and now just look at how much damage this necrotic plague is doing guys it's very very strong believe what I'm saying and I am not bullshitting you this is how you play it and um, yeah that's that that's the rock build guys that's how it's done so enjoy it and uh, fuck people up with it <laughs> <laughs> I'm unleashing my uh, my blueprints to how I do so much damage. You know, I had a lot of people inboxing me on YouTube after Hazer's stream um, because I started playing on Holy NBGs, and I'm like, dude, like you're you're keeping up with a Frost DK's damage, or dude, you just came in first place in damage. I've never seen an Unholy DK do that much damage, guys. It's all necrotic plague. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just pretend that we're in a 10v10 situation, okay? It will get very cluster. This is my last words of wisdom for the Unholy DK rot build. Okay. So, take the shit off the screen. Let's just say we are in an RBG game. Okay. And let's just say there's 10 guys all around. Am I going to try to get everybody stack up? No. Picture yourself getting beat up. Okay. What are you going to do? You're going to pick your target and fuck it up the best you can that's what the necrotic plague is for so i'm going to pick him he's going to be my bitch okay hold on this guy is going to be my bitch out of the other nine guys around him okay so now what i'm going to do is with him there's 10 guys but i'm not worrying about them when i pop unholy blight whoever's around this bitch is going to hit, get hit with my my unholy blight but i'm not worrying about that aspect of it what i'm worrying about is now I'm trying to get this blood tap stack one second i'm trying to get this blood tap stack trying to get this blood tap stack. Now, I got the blood tap stack. Now, you see his duration, okay? Now, watch this. Festering strike. And then I just blood tapped. I pull him into the middle of the other nine. And then blood bullet. Now, everybody's going to have a 15 stack of 20 seconds all over while Gargoyle and everything else is chewing at him. That is how you do it. You're, you're going from being a melee class to a utility rot build class. I'm telling you, this is just like a warlock build. I'm, I'm believe what I'm saying. I'm telling you. I'm not steering you wrong. And the key behind making your necrotic plague hit so hard, guys, is lining up your shit. What I mean by lining up your shit, guys, you have a proc trinket that procs uh, every 30 seconds, okay? You have unholy strength here that procs whenever. There's no cooldown on this. It can be at, it can be on 
it can be counting down 15, 14, 13, and then reproc, and then it's got another 15 seconds. So that's why Unholy Strength is very great. But this, this, and then you activate this, this is going to make your Necrotic Plague deal so much damage, guys. So what you need to do is you need to get somebody to 15, spread it to the team, and activate all of your fucking trinkets your buffs so you can deal the most damage as possible okay that is the unholy dk rot build guys and i will be sharing some gameplay with it so you can see i've actually recorded some of those games that i played with haze today on the stream you're going to hear him yapping in the background so i hope he doesn't mind that hope you guys don't mind that but um there's some great gameplay and you'll see what i'm talking about about me death gripping the guy with blood boiling it over or me just focusing on the stack duration and then letting it auto spread around whoever and then going around blood boiling it over to some other people that's all you're worrying about with your unholy dk and when you think that you're comfortable enough you can then start score striking. That's all you worry about, guys. So I'm going to do this one more time. Because I really want you guys to get it. Your Fixiate. The Fixiate is going to allow us to get 5 seconds to get those 2 Fessuring Strikes off to increase the duration. Scourge, Scourge. Death Coil, Death Coil. I'm going to pop my Garg and everything else. Okay. Fessuring one more time. Now Scourge. Blood Boil. Now I got a Blood Tap. Now I can Grip Spread it. I don't need to spread it because he's already next to me. So look, Scourge. Scourge, 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 Death Coil, Death Coil, Transform the Ghoul, now look, Blood Tap into a Festering Strike, Scourge Strike, Blood Bowl to spread it around, Death Coil, Icy Test to dispel him, you know what I'm saying, Soul Reaper, Chain of Ice to slow his ass down, I got my Rune Weapon back, look, Rune Weapon, Festering, Festering, it's all about the duration, guys, look at the damage, boom, boom, Death Coil, Death Coil, Death Coil, Death Coil. Scourge, I mean I did a, uh, a fetching strike and I blood tapped into some Scourge strikes guys. This is how you do it. Now guys, I don't want to waste too much more of this into this. I don't want to waste too much time into the rot build. That's how you do it. You're going to see it in action very, very shortly. So guys, rot build. That's how you do it. That's the combination. That's the most effective way to open. And um, if you guys are wondering what you do without Unholy Blight, guys, I told you. Okay, you stun, and you can plague strike, and you can do two festerings. It's all about the duration. It's not about the stack. Now you death core, now you death core. I don't have any holy blight, right? So if I want to get the stack up, let's plague strike now. Plague strike. Now let's uh, festering again. Okay. Now some scourges. Now look, if I want, okay, icy touch, icy touch, speed up, icy touch, and now look, it's up there. Icy touching is not a bad idea, and you're going to be doing a lot of icy touching when you're facing our druid. You're going to be doing a lot of icy touches when you're facing this priest. You're going to be doing a lot of icy touches when you're playing holy paladins, because they all have things you need to debuff. Paladins. You debuff all his buffs off. Then what happens? When he pops speed of light, you can take that right off. When he pops freedom, you can take that shit off. When he pops hand of protection, you take that shit off. So you're going to be actually using... Uh, icy touch and which is going to increase the stack without even knowing then when it comes to our Jewish you're going to be dispelling his buffs and then you're going to be dispelling his hots you know what I'm saying hots is heal over time because that's how he druids heal um, and when you purge those things off it's actually way better than trying to smack through it you know what I'm saying because sometimes Jewish don't even realize you're taking it off they think that they're safe, they run behind pillars, and they're like, oh shit, I gotta re-hop myself, and you done chewed away some more of their health, and then once you, you you're just icy touch spamming them, and he's just constantly melting because your utilities are doing all the work, which is your necrotic plague, your ghoul, it's just a big calculation that I that I that I see, and I and I have a, a old fashioned unholy DK damage rune management tutorial that you guys should watch. It's still very viable, guys. And uh, the only thing you need to do with that guide is substitute necrotic strike for scourge strike or for whatever else you need, because death runes equals whatever you want it to do. Okay. So now let's move move over to the next build, guys. Oh wait, priest. Okay, you purge priest. <laughs> You purge shields off a of priest. I think those shields absorb like 200k damage, something ridiculous like that. So guys, 200k on a shield of a priest. So that means icy touch kind of is equivalent to doing 200k damage to a disc priest. Bullshit. No, it's not bullshit because if you're, let's say you're not using icy touch, you want to do score strike because that's the thing to do. Score strike. Boom, boom, boom. You did three of them. You probably did what? 
let's just give you a, I'll give you a hundred K you still got 80 more K to chew through before you get to his health you know what I'm saying and you wasted three runes score strike does not hit that hard by the way so that's why sometimes when you're playing unholy you do shit damage because you're hitting into shields so why not purge purge now you do one score strike and you do way more damage because they don't have a shield and now you're going to hack at the health while the, the while the plague is doing this job while the ghoul is doing his job while your goggle is doing his job while your partner is doing his job then you cc him and that's how you gain your pressure guys now breath of synagogue build the one shot build all right we're going to now be changing these two talents why because unholy blight is going to be useless when you're running uh, Breath of Sinagosa because you don't have Necrotic Plague, okay? And the reason why this is, guys, is because we don't need to have Unholy Blight just to keep Blood Plague and Frost Room because one Plague Strike, boom, and it's on. One Outbreak, boom, and it's on, okay? So we don't need that for this. And it does its full capacity of damage as soon as you put it on. Okay, there's no stacking involved with the dots. You just plague strike and you're good to go. So that's why we're going to be using plague leech because you can just do a plague strike, plague leech, and plague strike again and it's back on. You have another rune, so plague leech equals like 20 runic power. So now, guys, the one shot build. <sighs> now, guys, when I give you this information, you guys have to humbly use it. Do not troll people do not do not use this for any type of fuck it cause havoc with it I don't give a damn but anyway let's go over it now again you're going to start off with a stun guys why because you want to stay on top of the guy when the guy is stunned he cannot parry when the guy is stunned sometimes they may panic and get an early trinket which then you can pet stun him short I'm going a little bit too fast so let me slow down let's go over the rotation now the rotation guys is we're going to just try to come deplete these as fast as we can because why six runes equals 60 runic power okay and the fastest way to get this guys is okay asphyxiate plague festering festering scores now from here guys we want to plague leech oh i'm sorry hold on hold on see i'm fucking up i forgot i have a macro set here for unholy blight and for um plague leech when you see me playing you see me switching these two don't get too confused with this this one is pretty much these are pretty much the same but unholy blights in one and plague leeches in another so let's do this again guys my bad my fault all right so now what we're going to do here guys is we're going to do an asphyxiate plague strike okay festering festering scourge pop the garg and everything else i don't have my proc trinket so Fuck, man, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to hit Breath of the Ghost, okay? Boom. Now look, Scourge. Scourge. I'm watching my runic power. Scourge. I'm watching my runic power. Scourge. Scourge. Blood tap. Scourge. Scourge. Rune weapon. Festering Strike. Scourge. Festering Strike. Scourge. Soul Reaper. Transform the Ghoul. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I got my score. I got my uh, Affixiate back. Scourge. 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 And then I hit Pet Stun. And nine times out of ten, if you let me stay on your ass like that, it is going to be good game. Now guys that is the combination that is the opener that is for when you're trying to mongoloid a healer and just one shot the shit out of them trust me it works i have plenty of footage doing this and um it's just pretty straightforward guys you stun the guy you deplete these runes as fast as you can if you want to be a little bit patient with it it's okay you can e you can even outbreak it's an icy touch icy touch leg 
Scourge, Blood Boil, Plague Leech, Plague Strike, Scourge. Scourge and then Breath. You don't have to be in a hurry to do it because you need your proc anyway. Now I can't do it because I don't have it on cooldown, but I will show you again some more combinations to do it, okay? But the goal, guys, is you need to get to 100 Gruner Power. Why? Because if you use Breath of Cynical set now, you're going to be starving to get it back to 100. Look, boom, while it's being uh, subtracted by 15. So the key is to get it to 100 before you activate it, and then go ham, guys. I'm getting my shit back soon, so let me, let's start talking about the build some more, okay? Now, if you guys are wondering what gear I'm using, which I probably should have stated before I even got started, <laughs> um, I'm actually using my Frost gear. <laughs> I'm not using the Force set. Um, and the reason why this is, is because, guys, in RBGs, um, in the arena, these classes are just hitting way too hard. There's a lot of cleave damage, and the pet just dies. And, um... Sometimes I forget to heal it, but I, I do my best to, to, to pay attention to it. Sometimes my healers don't heal it. And just having to resummon it and weren't and just managing that 25 seconds sometimes can be a pain. And why only have, um, if this, and, and the duration is not that long. Like sometimes I activate it and then I gotta fucking run away to, to, um, to safety. 15 seconds is a very, very short time, guys. So the versatility coming from my rings and my neck. The versatility coming from my, my belt, and my boots, and my pants, and my chest are actually going to provide me with a lot of defense along with, <laughs> it's going to provide me with a lot of defense as well as a lot of offense because like I said guys, versatility, if you, also, you can also read it here yourself, increases damage and healing done by 15.4% and decreases damage taken by 7.52%. So that's why I'm just using these for now. Also because I didn't want to buy the other pieces. I lied. I actually have them right here. And I just like this <laughs> build a lot better. I don't know. But like I said, I'm not maining Unholy right now. So you guys test this out yourself. But like I said, guys, having that extra versatility is really helping me be a lot more tankier. It's helping me stay in the Holy Presence a lot longer. And as Unholy, you kind of need all the damage you can get. Okay? So guys, that is the damage rotation for the Breath of Sindragosa build, okay? I'm going to do this one more time in a different fashion, okay? Now, there's a lot of guys who like to use Outbreak. Sometimes I forget I even have Outbreak. I don't even use it half of the time. So watch, here we go. Outbreak, okay? Festering, Festering. Scourge, Scourge, Plague Leech, Plague Strike, Scourge, Breath of Sindragosa, Festering Strike. Now I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Popping on my shit, waiting, waiting, blood tab, boom. Uh, room weapon. Oh, I don't got room weapon. Fuck, sorry. I would have room weapon there. I would have did two festering strikes, guys. My screen went just from black again. Okay, I would have did two festering strikes when I room weapon there and it would have kept burning. That's why you want um, your room weapon because it provides you with um, 25 runic power, which each which equals a second of necrotic plague, which which is going to provide you with that time gap to get those two festering strikes off to dump an instant 40 back into your runic power, and then another 20 from your two score strikes. And if you have plague leech, it's it's just very beautiful, guys. And this is the only way you can kill somebody with this spec it's it's very great you can one shot people with this believe me i've done it millions of times and uh just another thing guys uh, when you're in the arena there are things that happen that provide you with runic power okay one of those things is when you ams now when you ams guys any magic damage that you get any magic damage that you take from this point on while AMS is activated is going to provide you with more runic power. Okay, so if you're going to begin Salak, listen for Dark Soul. When you hear Dark Soul hit AMS and you're going to be like just getting reloaded with fucking runic power. Um, Boomkin, when a Boomkin is popping all his shit on you. Pop AMS. Runic power. Runic power. Runic power. And keep Breath of, turn Breath of Sinagosa on. And you're not even going to need to use your runes. Your, your, your breath is just going to keep going and it's going to keep reloading. Your breath is just going to just keep reloading. Uh, mages, when they use um, Comet Storm, AMS, you're going to just keep getting filled. They're going to probably dump some frost strikes and some frost uh, bolts into you. AMS, you're going to just keep absorbing it and the furnace is going to just keep 
burning. That's how I do it. Frost decays. Um, if you see a frost decay with 100 unit power, get next to him. Pop AMS. When he starts frost striking on you, <laughs> runic power, runic power, runic power. And your breath is going to be burning him while you're doing this. And on top of that, you're going to be score striking. You're going to be like, damn, am I still at 100 runic power? Damn, do I even need my rune weapon? But then when you pop rune weapon and then you do those two fashion strikes and you do those two score strikes, he's just going to be dead in the team game. Now, when it comes to DK to VDK, guys, um, the rot build is a lot much more successful than the one shot wonder because if you don't succeed at killing him with that breath, you have nothing else for two minutes. And a DK with four frost strikes will kill you, guaranteed. All right, guys. So that's it with the with the breath to Senegosa build. Now that I went over both of these guys, um, the opener is everything. When it comes down to gameplay, let me just whack the doll real quick so you guys can see. I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. So watch. Asphyxiate. Plex Strike. Scourge. Festering. Festering. Popping the Gargoyle. Okay. S two Death Coils. Okay. Now watch. Score Strike. Score Strike. Score Strike. Plex Leech. Plex Strike. Score Strike. I got a free Death Coil. Boom. Scourge. Scourge. Uh, blood Tap. Festering Strike. Death Coil. Dumping. Now I'm going to transform the Ghoul. I'm going to Blood Tap into a Festering Strike. In the score strike, I'm going to stun him again. Now, from this stun, he can't do shit, so I have time to not do shit. Hello, how you doing? My name is Hype Down. <laughs> scourge, 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 Soul Reaper. Now, watch this, guys. Boom, Plague Leech, Breath, Plague Strike, Scourge, Scourge, Blood Tap, Scourge, Festering Strike, Weapon, Festering Strike. Booms, score, scores, AMS. If I'm getting hit with magic damage, my furnace is going to be reloaded. I'm gonna fetch and strike for another second. Pet's done. Short. And from here, so uh asphyxiate. Fetch and strike. So we bring in. This is how you play around with it, guys. And from this point, look, I got a kite. I'm gonna just heal. I'm gonna go back, throw a chains, and I'm gonna recharge. When I say recharge in the game, that means that I'm gonna keep the runic power that I have. I'm going to keep the stack I have, let me actually reload that, boom, and I'm going to wait for my runes to come back so I can have an advantage when I open back up, I just started back in combat with 16 runic power, you know what I'm saying, scourge, 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 uh, blood boil, death coil, death coils, scourge, blood tap, scourge, scourge, see but from this point guys, you do no damage, I'm going to activate my trinket, I'm going to plex strike to put the dots back on, from this point you just do no damage, Scourge, Blood Tap, Scourge, Icy Touch, Plague Leech, Plague Strike, Scourge, Death Coil, Death Coil, Scourge, Scourge, Blood Tap, Scourge. This is me hitting the dummy dog, guys. Your rotation isn't really anything. You just use what you can and you try to provide pressure with your six runes at a time. Now, from this point, you don't want to just keep doing one rune. And then blood tap into another rune, and then another rune, and then a death coil, death coil. This is not going to get you any damage. So when you see yourself getting low on runes, guys, you got to kite. You got to get out of there. You got to recharge. You got to tell your team what's up. Because that's the whole point of a team. Um, a lot of guys don't realize that, but you got to pull back sometimes, guys. It's not about being on your guy 100% of the time. And again, guys, if you're running with Glyph of... Which I don't think I'm running with either. If you're also running with... Glyph of runic power as you're being slowed, CC'd, whatever you're going to be regenerating runic power. So now, as you're trying to get back to the target, you might even you might even be CC'd so long that you have 100 runic power just because of that glyph. You know what I mean? So you got to think about all of that stuff. Everything's a part of your equation when it comes to the rotation. Like I said, it's a priority system. Okay, but that's why the Breath of Sinagosa build is a, is great, but then it's also bad because okay. Scourge, uh, Plex Strike, I did not do two Festering Strike, Scourge, I'm gonna Plague Leech into a Plex Strike, let me just zoom out some more so you can see my dots, Scourge, 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 now look, if I pop Breath of Sinagosa, Polly, Polly, Cyclone, I'm fucked, and he's away, and I'm pissed off, and now, all I got is my Gargoyle and my pet to do anything. Like, that's why this build can cost you the game sometimes. Because you're going to need everything to land a kill with this build. And it's a one-shot wonder build because 
a good team will kill you in two minutes or three minutes. Like it's it's rare to kind of get two consecutive three minute cooldowns because when you have breath guys, you're gonna want to use it right away. You're not gonna want to wait that extra minute for the gargoyle. Like I feel like this unholy will be great, guys. Unholy will be great, and I will main it if they just made gargoyle a fucking one minute cooldown and made this a one minute cooldown only for unholy. Something like they or like. I, I just don't know man like cuz three minutes is fucking horrible or make room weapon like for for unholy or for any class make it fucking three minute cool now like five fucking minutes like come on but anyway that's it guys um, I just showed you both of my builds guys I've showed you my rock build I've showed you my one shot yeah. breath of Sinagosa build this has went on for a very very long time but again, guys, this is all information for you guys. Rewind it. Watch it three times. Um, skim through it. Because, guys, this is for you. This is going to be here forever for you guys to come time to time and just to understand what is going on with the Unholy DK. And again, guys, this is it. This is how you play it. The Breath of Sinagosa build is all about getting your 100 green of power, lining up your procs again let me i forgot to state that you line up your procs so you can get the biggest damage with your breath of sinagosa <sighs> let me do this again because i, I just want to make sure i get it on on camera all right so watch plague asphyxiate scourge i mean uh festering festering see that uh scourge scourge plague leech plague strike scourge popping on my shit now watch breath Special strike, score strike, room weapon. Oh no, room weapon! Come on, room weapon! Come on, come on, room weapon! Please, 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 please! There it is. Ooh, scores, <laughs> scores. They miss. Now you see how hard breath is hitting for. This is great because it's hitting every single second. It's not like the the dots that's hitting once every two seconds. This is hitting every second. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a lot. So that's what you want to do, guys. You want to line up your procs. All right. So guys, I hope this answered your question. I kind of rushed this video because, like I said, a lot of people were just asking after watching me play the Unholy and the BGs with Hazed. And um, this is it, guys. So as always, guys, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Like, subscribe, refer me to some friends, and please continue to be a fantastic audience. Guys, if you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, um, if you have any questions about something that I said that I just strayed away from, uh, please leave it in the comments below because as you know, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Guys, I hope this has helped you. I hope this has given you more confidence with the Unholy DK class. Um, I'm not telling you that this is stronger than Frost because I'm going to tell you this one more time before this shit ends. Frost is the strongest spec to play because it's more convenient because the runic power source provides you with instant damage. Okay, nothing unholy has has that big damage. You need all your runes. You need runic power. You need you need your gargoyle. You need your breath. You just need so many cooldowns and everything to be perfect. Do anything with a, with an unholy DK. And if you miss, your pressure is only going to be medium. It's not going to be oh oh shit I'm about to die. Okay. Um, Frost DKs man, they have the potential to just carry the team. Um, and that's just why I love it because I have control over the damage. I have the power to get somebody from 100% to 30% with four strikes. Unholy is incapable of that. Okay, and that's why I choose Frost. That's why I am not going to get my teams by playing Unholy because it is what it is. And like I said, guys, I'm a DK vet. I've been playing DK since Race of the Lynch King. I have the right to play frost i've even played frost back in the day i have like two two shitty graphics two shitty graphic games of uh me at frost doing two-hander with like the old blood tap and it's pretty funny it's cataclysm and uh i just i used to mess around with that because i was maining unholy so i'm doing that thing again when i just keep talking guys i don't want to waste too much more of your time as always guys it's been a pleasure and again i hope you enjoyed this video this is your boy hyped down and i'll see you next time peace